Let's say your client wants an overhead rig. They say, hey, Pete, we'd love for you to do this shoot, but we need that shot top down. What are you gonna, I don't even know why I'm talking about a client. Let's just say you want an overhead rig. You're making a video, you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. You need an overhead shot. Now, your choice is you drill into the ceiling, you drill into the wall. I don't know what kind of a drill that is unless you're using like a, it doesn't matter. The drywall's getting ruined, things are coming out, you can't find the stud, you, you need batteries, and you never have triple A's when you need them. And the whole thing just ends up being a huge hassle when you think, I hate overhead rigs, I wish there was just a super easy way, maybe something I could buy where I don't have to hang, drill, screw, mount, I just, I just want a top-down shot so I can do a card trick. And I just so happen to have a deck of cards right here. <gasps> when in Rome. So check this out, let's say we want a nice, clean overhead shot where we can monitor what's happening. We want someone to go through, pick a card, they take one out, it's the Ten of Hearts. Ooh, that's a favorite of mine. It's total lies, this is just patter. You do this when you do magic tricks. You gotta like come up with a story and like make it entertaining like. All right, so the 10 is lost in the middle of the pack against all odds. We snap our fingers, magical gesture, going through the cards to find one card and one card only has changed colors. Oh my goodness, it's a miracle. Magic has happened, folks. One card is red. Now, could it be the card that you're thinking of? Turn it over. Boom, 10 of hearts it is, the crowd goes wild, but you gotta do it again, because there's always a skeptic. There's always someone who's like, mm mm. So we'll take that 10 of hearts, I will leave it on my knee, so that it doesn't go on the table, so that's what it's gonna have to do. All right, so we'll go through again. You say stop anywhere, you can't, so I'll just stop for you, take a look, that's the king of hearts, we'll leave that in the center. Magical gesture, whatever, I don't even know what I'm doing. And uh, we'll go through again, and would you look at that, one more card. One more card. You see, this is the part where I'm faking it. I'm making you think that I messed up because I already know that one card that's on my knee. Bring that into focus. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about overhead rigs. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to another video and yes, that long exaggerated intro was just to say that we're doing a video on overhead rigs today. Now I'll tell you why we're doing this video because a lot of the times I like to preface my material on things that happen to me in real life. So for instance, the last video you guys saw on my channel was me disassembling a 1DX Mark II. I know, if you haven't seen it, link above. Now before I even did that, the challenge was trying to figure out how I was going to shoot this overhead because I have nowhere in my office, nowhere in my studio that actually allows me to mount this camera. Now in that little gear room, which is actually a walk-in closet, there are like crossbars for hanging clothes. It's just the windows behind me and the light doesn't work. So I needed to do it in this main space, but I had no way to do that. I didn't want to actually ruin the drywall. I don't want to drill into like stucco in the ceiling. And a lot of you guys don't have studios or dedicated spaces for shooting. So you just have to rig something up. And overhead rigs, as simple as they sound, are actually kind of difficult. Everybody that I've seen that has an overhead rig, it's usually Jimmy rigged in some sort of way, which is kind of awesome because it really takes some creativity and knowing which parts to use. But I'm kind of just going to break this video down and show you what I use for an overhead rig. It's something that every cinematographer needs in their arsenal, something that every photographer needs in their arsenal. So if you don't have one of these, you should probably go out and buy one anyway. Then we're going to talk about how I actually monitor what I'm shooting when it's overhead. And then lastly, we're finishing this off with another giveaway. And speaking of giveaways, we got to give away that M5. Ooh, yeah, baby. Okay, folks. Winner of this tasty M5 package to get you going, vlogging, taking photos, making videos, just changing the world is. What's her name? <laughs> Maria Simoranda. She's from Spain, so it's probably like Maria Simoranda. <laughs> Felicidades, usted ha ganado la camera. Congratulations, you won the camera, I think. <laughs> I should watch more Narcos. <laughs> I will be shipping this to you in Spain this week or next week. So keep an eye out for it. I've already emailed you, so check your inbox. Congratulations, thanks for participating. Okay, so there are probably a thousand ways to actually mount a camera overhead. There's safe ways to do it. There's not safe ways to do it. There are actual things you can buy to do it. A lot of people, like I said earlier, Jimmy rig their own solutions and some people have permanent mounts for overhead rigs so that when you need to go shoot something that's overhead, it's already there for you. Now the problem with overhead rigs is they're just a little bit of like a pain in the ass, especially if you only have one camera. Then you gotta disassemble the camera that you're shooting on, unconnect everything, figure out how to mount it above. It depends how heavy your camera is, it's gonna depend on which lens you're using with that camera, and then how you're gonna see what you're doing, and then how do you make sure it's not gonna fall over, and when you, I can't mount it. There's so many different issues 
that you can run into. And here it is. This is essentially the overhead setup. Now the best part about this is I can move this rig wherever I want because all this is is a C-stand counterweighted over here with the sandbags. So this whole thing doesn't come falling down on top of me. But that's essentially it. Now that you get to see it, you kind of know what it looks like, doesn't take up a whole lot of room, and it's really, really easy to assemble. Okay, I'm gonna film this on my 1DX2 just so that I can get mobile with it. I'm gonna put the microphone, here's a fun little tip, put the microphone on backwards if you know everything you're gonna be shooting is in front of you. That way, the audio isn't trying to pick up like around, it's not gonna be very clear. You turn that mic around, you've got a microphone right in your mouth, you almost have to be careful not to get too close to it. Boom. The audio is way crisper, it sounds way better, and I've been doing that a lot when I'm doing a hotel room tour, like you guys saw in that video in New York. You can watch Blade Runner while you're in the bathroom. That is just absolutely incredible. If you didn't see it, I'll link that one too. Woohoo, links. Okay, I'll leave this running too, just so we have two angles, because yeah, why not? Okay, so this is a C stand. The reason C stands are really good is because they have really wide, supportive legs that can really hinge in and out any which way you want. Super solid, they're not going anywhere, and they come out quite a distance. And they're really built so they can withstand a lot of weight from multiple angles. All right, so they're really, really heavy, really heavy duty stands. We coming up here, this is where we have our first grip head. Now this grip head has a whole bunch of holes in it and different mounts and it comes with this really long arm. That's my light, sorry that it's super bright and <laughs> blown out. But this really long arm has another grip head at the end of it. So I've taken a spigot, that's what this is right here. That's a spigot and it has different thread sizes on the top and on the bottom. I stuck it in this hole, clamped it down with this and just put my uh, Gorillapod head on it. And on the Gorillapod head is the tripod plate which connects to the camera, which lets me point it straight down. And that's pretty much it. That hangs all the way out this far. So you can see that's a pretty good distance and that lets me shoot straight down. Now I have countered that with a sandbag because if I didn't have a sandbag, this whole thing would be falling down this way. So it's important that you have counterweights, get some sandbags, a couple. But once you have a C stand, a sandbag, a couple of these little jobbies here, I'll show you close up in a second, and some tripod heads, you can pretty much mount anything anywhere to any position. Um, the little friction arm over there is just a small little aperture light that I had shining on the background, which isn't even on right now, so it's completely pointless. Forget that. Pretend it's not even there. But that is essentially how I'm doing the overhead rig. Now, a lot of you might be like, how are you actually seeing what you're doing? And for that, I'm using the, uh, the small HD focus monitor. It's that new monitor they have for DSLRs that swivels. So check this out. You can swivel it to any direction if you need it to point straight down so that you can see if you need it to point straight up. It doesn't matter. That's the best feature of it. You can point it right around if someone else wants to monitor it from behind the camera if you don't need to look. But since I was doing some card stuff, I had it pointed straight down so that I could just look up in a moment's notice, make sure I'm in focus, continue to peek up. Heck, I could just do this the whole time and make sure everything's in focus, but that's the beauty of having the focus monitor there. And, and, as it just so happens to be, I have an extra focus monitor. You see, Small HD sent me one to play with, and they actually sent me another one, should I want to give it away on my channel. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to start another giveaway. I'll let it run one week. You guys know how it works. Click the link below to participate. There's a bunch of different things you can do to win. So I'll announce the winner in a week or so time, and you'll be taking home a brand new Small HD focus monitor. So all you have to do is pick up the C-Stand. I've linked some cheap options in Amazon below if you guys want to check that out. Now I did a video called seven stupid things you need on set and the grip head which two of them come with the C stand was one of those things. So invaluable tool, very handy. It's not going to be something that sits in the drawer or under the bed that you never use. You'll use it all the time. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out here and do our exit. Too far. <laughs> So that's pretty much it guys. I mean, this was a fast video. This was just something I wanted to share with you because I've struggled trying to figure out an overhead rig for ages and this is just like a super simple solution. Stand, arm, spigot, tripod mount, good to go. So the links for everything are below. The contest, the C-stand, the monitor itself. Check those out if you want. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into 2018 style. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you guys in the next video. It's true. See you later.